Meditation should be practiced every day of one's life. Look, what is there in this world? Absolutely nothing that is lasting. Therefore, direct your longing towards the eternal. In order to develop a taste for meditation, you have to make a deliberate and sustained effort. Even if you do not feel inclined to meditate, conquer your reluctance and make an attempt. The habit of countless lives is pulling you in the opposite direction and making it difficult for you. Persevere in spite of it. By your tenacity, you will gain strength and be moulded. That is to say, you will develop the capability to do sadhana. In this world you get a thing and by tomorrow it may be gone. Therefore direct your longing towards the eternal. Pray that the work done through you, the divine instrument, may be pure. In every action, remember that. The purer your thinking, the finer will be your work. That is why your life should be spent in a spirit of service. Feel that the Lord is accepting services from you in whatever you do. If you desire peace, you must cherish the thought of the divine. Within the present state of affairs, things are happening as they are destined to be. The world means ceaseless movement and obviously there can be no rest in movement. How could there be peace in perpetual coming and going? Peace reigns when no coming exists and no going, no melting and no burning. Reverse your course, advance towards that. Then there will be hope of peace. Some severe blow of fate will drive you towards God. This will be but an expression of God's mercy. However painful, it is by such blows that one learns one's lesson.
To have faith is imperative. The natural impulse to have faith in something which is deep rooted in humans develops into faith in God. This is why human birth is such a great boon. There are two kinds of pilgrims on life's journey. The one, like a tourist, is keen on sightseeing, wandering from place to place, flitting from one experience to another for the fun of it. The other treads the path that is consistent with one's true being and leads to one's real home, to self-knowledge. Sorrow will of certainty be encountered on the journey undertaken for the sake of sightseeing and enjoyment. So long as one's real home has not been found, suffering is inevitable. The sense of separateness is the root cause of misery because it is founded on error, on the conception of duality. A person's belief is greatly influenced by their environment. Therefore, they should choose the company of the holy and wise. Belief means to believe in oneself. Disbelief to mistake the non-self for oneself. There are instances of self-realization occurring by the grace of God, whereas at other times it can be seen that the divine awakens in some a feverish yearning after truth. In the first case, attainment comes spontaneously. In the second, it is brought about by trials. But all is wrought solely by the mercy of the divine. An eternal relationship exists between God and humans. But in God's play, it is sometimes there and sometimes severed. 
or rather appears to be severed. It is not really so, for the relationship is eternal. Again seen from another side, there is no such thing as relationship. Someone who came to meet this body said, I am a newcomer to you. He got the reply, ever new and ever old indeed. The light of the world comes and goes. It is unstable. The light that is eternal can never be extinguished. By this light you behold the outer light and everything in the universe it is only because it shines ever within you that you can perceive the outer light. Whatever appears to you in the universe is due solely to that great light within you. And only because the supreme knowledge of the essence of things lies hidden in the depths of your being is it possible for you to acquire knowledge of any kind. Everything is in God's hands and you are God's tool to be used by that as it pleases. Try to grasp the significance of all is the divine's and you will immediately feel free from all burdens. What will be the result of your surrender to the divine? None will seem alien. All will be your very own yourself. Who can tell at what moment the flame of illumination will blaze forth? For this reason, continue your efforts steadily without flagging. Gradually, you will get more and more deeply absorbed in the reality. That and that alone will preoccupy your thoughts and feelings.
for the mind ever seeks that which gives it proper sustenance. And this cannot be provided by anything save the supreme reality itself. Then you will be carried away by the current that leads to the reality. You will discover that the more you delight in the inner life, the less you feel drawn to external things. In consequence, the mind becomes so well nourished with the right kind of food that at any moment the realisation of its identity with the reality may occur. There are instances when one loses consciousness while sitting in meditation. Some people have found themselves swooning away, as it were, intoxicated with joy, remaining in this condition for quite a long time. On emerging, they claim to have experienced some sort of divine bliss. But this is certainly not realisation. A stage does exist in meditation where intense joy is felt, where one is as if submerged in it. But what is it that gets submerged? The mind, of course. At a certain level, and under certain circumstances, this experience may prove an obstacle. If repeated time and again, one may stagnate at its particular level, and thereby be prevented from getting a taste of the essence. In the event of an experience of anything pertaining to ultimate reality or to the self, one does not say, where have I been? I did not know anything for the time being. There can be no such thing as not knowing. One must be fully conscious, wide awake, to fall into a stupor or into yogic sleep will not take one anywhere. After genuine contemplation, worldly pleasures become unalluring, dull, entirely savourless. 
What does detachment signify? When every single object of the world kindles, as it were, the fire of renunciation, so as to make one recoil as from a shock, then there is inward and outward awakening. This, however, does not mean that detachment implies aversion or contempt for anything of the world. It simply is unacceptable. The body refuses it. Neither dislike nor anger will arise. When detachment becomes a living inspiration, one begins to discriminate as to the true nature of the world, until finally, with the glowing certainty of direct perception, the knowledge of its illusoriness arises. Each and everything belonging to the world seems to burn. One cannot touch it. This also is a state that may ensue at a particular time. At present, what you enjoy does not impress you as being short-lived. Rather does it appear to make you happy. But to the extent that the spirit of detachment is roused, the relish of such pleasures will die down. For are they not fleeting? In other words, death will die. Now that you are advancing towards that which is beyond time, the semblance of happiness brought about by mundane things is being consumed. As a result, the question, what actually is this world, will arise. So long as the world seems enjoyable to you, such a query does not present itself. Since you are progressing towards that which transcends time, all that belongs to time will begin to appear to you in its true light. Because you are in the grip of time, you have not yet reached the state where everything is perceived 
as the reality alone. Herein lies the solution of the whole problem. To sometimes feel that the world is merely ideas is good, since your feeling is related to the supreme quest, for nothing is ever wasted. What you have realised, even for a second, will at some time or other bear fruit. Thus, the knowledge of the real character of each element and the knowledge what water, air, sky, etc. are and hence what creation is, will flash into your consciousness one by one, just like buds bursting open. Flowers and fruit come into existence only because they are potentially contained in the tree. Therefore, you should aim at realising the one supreme element that will throw light on all elements. You have a desire to give up, but you cannot let go. Such is your problem. Let that desire awaken in your heart. Its stirring signifies that the time is coming when you will be able to give up.